All right, guys, as I mentioned in a previous video, today we're going to talk about Hogue and why I think that this knife company is really killing it. Now, like I've talked about at nauseum in previous videos, there's a lot of American knife companies out there or companies that are making knives in America that are really falling short of the general community and expectations and there are a lot of rationalized opinions and i'm not going to say that they aren't without their validity because i do think they are pretty valid but i will say that i am very impressed with hoke because they are one of the few companies that really seems to be bucking the trend of just uninspired um, knives in the American knife making industry. And of course, there are plenty of good custom knife makers out there in America. But when it comes to like production, reasonably affordable blades, there's not that many amazing options out there that haven't uh, already been out there for a while. Now, of course, I am holding a DECA and this is unfortunately the only Hogue I own at the minute. But rest assured, there are many other amazing designs by Hogue. And I'm going to explain why I think that Hogue is actually killing it in this day and age. So first off and foremost, like I mentioned in another video, I think one of the biggest kickers to the American knife industry and why it's failing is its lack of desire and passion to work with smaller knife manufacturers, uh, smaller custom makers. Now, this knife is made uh, in part with Elishwitz, um, or I think it's, or Alan Elishwitz, um, who is a small time, or not so small time, but definitely a custom knife manufacturer. And that is something that is really huge because especially like I was saying in a previous video, um, like at SHOT Show, we saw so many American knife makers like Buck, like Benchmade, who most of their lineup, if not their entire lineup, were just internal designs that they had made themselves and usually fairly old designs, but they weren't really collaborating with smaller knife makers or custom knife makers and the biggest problem with this is that undoubtedly your custom knife makers because they are so small they have to truly appeal to the knife community so therefore they have this unique outlook and leverage on knowing what the, the community wants what the community desires and what their tastes are because unfortunately whether knife manufacturers know it or not you know tastes for knives largely change now I might be a a little bit of a rare bird in that i like a lot of the older designs and such but by and large a lot of your newer people in the edc community want something else and so if you keep making the same product the same designs and or you go to slight modifications or updates or refreshes or remasters whatever you want to call them of the same old designs you're going to lose a lot of the market share and that's essentially what's happening with china china is collaborating with a lot of makers such as Ray Laconico, Michael Gavick, and the list goes on and on. And so they have so many people in their Rolodex, so to speak, that if they need a fresh new design that is going to be in touch with the people that use knives the most, they can easily do it. Now, once again, Hogue is kind of taking that trend themselves. They're not trying to internally create a lot of knives. They might start out with something like this DECA where they know it want, they want it to be an ultralight manual opening knife, and they might have even known that they wanted an axis-like lock in it, or an able lock in this case. Um, <clears throat> but ultimately, they let someone like Alan Eleishwitz, who is a custom maker, who knows the community pretty darn well, um, really take the reins and make a knife that is realistic for production, but also something that the community is going to want. Now, unfortunately, the deck itself is kind of funny because it's not actually that popular. And I think it's because genuinely a lot of people don't know about this blade and they don't actually know how essentially this is like a Benchmade bug out killer because honestly this thing is better than the Benchmade bug out in every like legitimate way and uh, I'm not even trying to just say that because like I own a Benchmade myself or Benchmade bug out I should say so this thing literally is better than that but uh, you know um, ultimately these knives do actually a really good job 
and are innovative because you have those custom makers directly influencing that um, knife. It's not just, oh, we want a knife that's under two ounces or under three ounces. You know, we want something that's made of a premium steel with an access lock. It's something that's truly a custom design that is brought into production. And that is going to naturally be more appealing to most people. So not only that, I lastly, I think the biggest reason or maybe the second biggest reason as to why Hogue is winning is their price points. In this world or in this comp competitive space, we are seeing constant price increases, oftentimes with no real justification. Companies like Chris Reeve, companies like Benchmade again, um, are raising their prices without really giving any explanation. And don't be wrong, I understand inflation is real. I get that material costs are higher, wages are going up. Like I do know that things are getting more expensive. So you would expect to see knife prices going up, but seeing a knife double or sometimes triple in price, is very dubious at best. And so one way I think Hogue is really killing it, and I don't know if this is personally because I know Hogue's main expertise is not knives. So primarily Hogue, for those who don't know, makes things like gun grips and primarily specializes in G10 grips. And that is like their larger claim to fame. So Hogue is not necessarily as well known for their knives. And therefore I don't think Hogue makes, like as far as their percentages of money brought in, I don't think knives are like their absolute money maker. So that could be the reason as to why they have more affordable knife prices is because maybe they think it's more of a marketing ploy that if you can buy a Hogue knife, then maybe you'll buy Hogue products in the future. Kind of like how Costco does with their, you know, like hot dogs and, you know, hot food. So it, it could be potentially that, but Either way, um, regardless to the exact reason as to why Hoag's knife prices are so affordable, they truly are releasing things like OTFs, Axis Lock inspired knives um, for incredible prices. I mean, even this knife right here um, in its non blacked out blade configuration is $120 to $127 pretty regularly, um, just about anywhere you look, which for this blade, like once again, if you could get this for $120 CPM Magna Cut blade, with you know i mean this polymer handle isn't that fantastic but still at 120 bucks you're coming in a solid at least 30 dollars if not 40 or 50 dollars cheaper than a bug out which is honestly very comparable in size and performance to this um package so you know it is undercutting the competition significantly and uh that is something that i think is really really important to note and i think like, that's why they're winning is they are just able to um keep their prices low and that is invaluable at this uh current time so anyways guys those are some of the reasons i think hogue is winning the biggest thing i think i dislike about hogue is honestly they don't really like market themselves out there or maybe it's the knife companies themselves places like blade hq e knives um, knife center i mean they do feature and if you go on places like blade hq you'll find these knives but you don't really see things like the hogue deca you know like making the headlines like if you know what i mean you'll go to like a, a website and like at the top will be like newer rivals and you'll always see your micro techs your bench maids all of those brands are just pro predominantly like right there when you look at the screen but you really don't see things like the hogue deca they're kind of you know uh buried away and i think that's kind of a big disadvantage and once again i don't know if that's because hogue doesn't really market themselves that well or if the companies just don't want to market hogue because they're fierce competition. I mean, like I said, if more people knew about this knife, I think the desire and aspiration for bug outs, bench made bug outs would go down drastically because this in every way, it's cheaper, has better steel, at least in stock configuration because the stock bug out is S30V. This is Magna Cut. Um, in, in stock configuration, this knife is better than the bug out in every single way. Like it's on paper, it is a better knife. Um, so not to just be rude or just, you know, throw the Benchmade bug out under the bus, but like literally this is better. So anyways, uh, 
That's kind of, I think, the thing that disappoints me the most about the company. And I don't know how much end control they have over that, because like I said, obviously, they work with retailers like Blade HQ to get their product to people. I mean, even me, I bought this guy off of eBay, right? So, you know, you're working with third parties to get your products out. So it's not the greatest, but if you're watching the video, definitely check out Hogue. I think things like the DECA and others, um, I know they've worked with Ritter or Doug Ritter to make some awesome knives as well. And once again, their OTFs are really cool. Um, I'm blanking on a lot of their names at the moment, unfortunately, but they do make a lot of really cool models. And I'm definitely gonna be adding more Hogues to my um, collection. Because like I said, the price point is there, the performance is there. I'm happy to see that they're American manufacturers and uh, or that the knives are made in America. And those are all things that are really big wins for me. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.